MS-109 tune. Uh, I put five gallons of MS-109 in the car. Uh, we ran sport mode on our only pass of the day. Uh, foot on the brake, no RPM build up, and as soon as the light turned green, just mashed the gas. That was it. Uh, right around fifth or sixth, I would actually probably around sixth or seventh gear, it was really high up there, right around the, the finish line, is when I um, noticed a little kind of like not a shutter but like it pulling back on me and I believe that was torque management working its magic because these things have some awful limits in them <laughs> I mean before when it was stock at wide open throttle it feel like it was hesitating or bogging that's the torque management kicking in uh, we had some of that tuned out I actually have a TCM tune that's supposed to go in with my current tune However, when I switched out of the 93 to the MS-109 tune, I forgot to include the TCM tune, and I realized that later on that night when I went back and watched the footage, I forgot to add it, so whoops. Um, I don't know if that cost me a, a tenth or not, but definitely wasn't good. <laughs> so that won't happen again. That mistake won't happen again. Uh, the track had some mishaps. Talked about a lady going up the track in a uh, funny car blew up her engine, drug oil all the way down the lane. I, I don't know if she panicked or if she just couldn't stop. I don't know what the si situation was. All I know is it took an hour and a half to clear the track, like resurface it. So that was one. And then immediately following that, another guy broke down. That took 30 minutes to clean. And then we were still in line for a couple of hours waiting to do our second pass. And then another car it didn't look like it was should be there to begin with. It just didn't look like it was road serviceable. It went down the track and blew up. And caught fire. And then after that, it was like, like I said, like a kid on prom night pulled out early and left. I couldn't stay another minute. Um, Sean was there, one of the members from our group. Uh, I'm going to let, he ran an 11-2. He's in his quest to crack 10s. He's in a uh, Hellcat um, Charger. Very nice car. Um, but I'll let him know the next time I go and a couple other people who were asking me. But it'll be in a couple of weeks. It'll be on a Friday. I'll give you guys a heads up early. 
and I'll plan this out a little bit more. This was more of a uh, last minute deal. Uh, I was supposed to go see Brian at Elite Custom Lighting on Friday and drop off my headlight, but that got canceled. So at the last second, I was like, you know what, F it, I'm going to Echo. And my plan was to get there right at 4.30, register, get on the track at five, do three or four passes and come home and be home by eight. And that didn't happen, did it? <laughs> Closer nope. to midnight. Closer to midnight. Uh, well, things happen. Uh, but Pro Charger ran like a champ. Um, for a vehicle that's only putting out 6 PSI to and that weighs 5,300 pounds, probably a little bit more today. <laughs> Come on. Uh, he, right. <laughs> Dead meat. Um, to, to crack into later. the 11s on on just so little boost uh, is pretty impressive, you know. So for a daily driver to have a kit that you could slap on, you could daily your vehicle, uh, drive it however you like, day in and day out, and then run it over the track and just run 11s with it, um, it's pretty impressive for a vehicle this size. A lot of people come over and ask me what I did on my first pass, and they kept asking me if it was a track hop. <laughs> it's like no. One guy actually walked by with his family and said, uh, I think it's a challenger. What? Why are you even at the track? Uh, but that was interesting. So everything is running good. Longevity wise is the next thing, the last thing I need to tackle. Uh, I talked about getting rid of the vehicle because of all the warranty issues I have with it. I'm not doing that at least until June. That would be one year with the kit doing everything Hopefully nothing else breaks on my vehicle. If it does, then that June is out the window. I'm at my wit's end. That's it. Um, I can put up with the carbon fiber trim peeling. I'm getting my headlight fixed. GPS failing or not working that one day. I have a phone to compensate for that. So as long as nothing else happens, fingers crossed, we're going to go until June. Um, and that will knock out the third thing telling you that, you know, thousands of miles and, and over a year driving with it and show you that there's no problems we are approaching 5,000 miles on the kit we will be having the uh, oil changed on Friday or Saturday I forget what day I made my appointment I got to call Chase or Evan tomorrow over at Dunfab Motorsports in Pensalkin and ask them what time I set up I forget they're going to change the Pro Charger and they're going to change the uh, vehicle oil for me so check back in on Friday for both Pro Charger update and the update will include showing you how to change the oil using a mini vac. It's like a big turkey baster, like a giant syringe. Suck it out. It's recommended by Pro Charger and HHP and most shops that uh, install these. So if you're concerned about sucking the oil out from the top where the little sprue and the dipstick is attached, don't be concerned. I know I had a couple comments from people going, oh, you can't do that. You've got to drain it from the bottom, which is not true. So that's all I got today. If you have any questions, comment below please subscribe if you'd like and if you have any questions for her don't bother because you know eh. <laughs> i'm so dead all right people that's all i got for you today have be safe i'm out <laughs> and if i don't come back on here call the police mm -hmm. wink wink just did something <laughs> all right i'm out